Remember the days when you could just go to Toys R Us or EB Games, grab like a Sega Genesis off the shelf and walk out the door with everything you need? No? Okay, I dated myself. Look, my point is that today's next-gen gaming consoles are pretty advanced, and there's gobs of accessories and upgrades available too, which is cool, but that also means getting the setup you want can take a bit of work. That's assuming you can even get the console. I guess scalping hasn't changed that much. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and thanks to this awesome job I've got, I'm lucky to have a PS5 here and a bunch of stuff to go with it. So I'm gonna run you through a host of ideas on how to get yourself going with the best PS5 experience possible. Or, you know, at least everything in place until that PS5 finally shows up. Can we just have plenty of consoles already? It's been like a year now, right? Get it together. <clears throat> Sorry. The PS5 I have here belongs to the company. It's not mine and I'm still waiting to get one too. Speaking of, are you rocking a PS5 at home and what does your setup look like? Or are you suffering at the hands of bots like me? Tell me about it down in the comments. Oh, and if you like this video, consider clicking like and subscribing because there's lots more where this came from. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Let's do it. The first thing you'll need is a TV because none of this other stuff is gonna matter unless you've got the TV at the end of the pipeline. Now, I've got a video on the best gaming TVs you can buy. Oh look, there's a link. So feel free to go check that out, but then come back here for the good stuff. I do wanna mention that lots of TVs are good for gaming with the PS5. I'd encourage you to look for a TV that has HDMI 2.1 inputs. That's the easiest way to determine if a TV has the capability to do all the things the PS5 can do, like, 4K 120 hertz gaming, HDR, super low input lag, etc. It's not absolutely necessary. You can game on any TV with any HDMI input, but the best TVs for the PS5 unlock a bunch of goodies. Next, I wanna talk about HDMI cables. Yes, the PS5 does come with an ultra high speed HDMI cable in the box and it will do just fine, but it isn't an especially long HDMI cable. So if you think you'll want something other than what comes in the box, Here's what I suggest. Find yourself an ultra high speed HDMI cable. Sometimes the cable will be marketed as being 8K compliant. Other times it may be marketed specifically for the PS5 or Xbox Series X. Sometimes it may be HDMI certified to be 2.1 compliant. With a high bandwidth cable like this, you'll be sure to get 4K 120 hertz gaming along with other features like Dolby Atmos and HDR when they're supported. Now this HDMI cable made by Stouchy, I think that's how you pronounce it, is an affordable option that ticks off the most important boxes for use with your PS5. So if you want a no brainer option, there you go. But you also now know what to look for yourself. Make sure you get a cable that's as long or a bit longer than you think you'll need so you can change your arrangement down the road if you want. Speaking of getting the most out of your PS5, you know it's a pretty sweet media hub, right? Today's smart TVs have all the streaming apps built in, sure, but going back to the aughts, yes, I said aughts, the PlayStation remains one of the best media hubs you can get. The PlayStation 5, especially the one with the 4K Blu-ray drive, is no exception. You've got 4K Blu-ray capability with the disk drive version, and you also get quick and easy access to all of the streaming channels you want, thanks to Sony providing separate tabs for watching content and playing games. And the best way to control all that media is the official PlayStation Media Remote. Since it's made to work with the PS5, you can power on the console and control everything you could with the game controller, but it's designed to be more like a conventional TV remote. It has a built-in IR transmitter, which means you can control your TV's volume and such, and you can use your voice to search for whatever you wanna watch on your PS5. Also, like your smart TV remote, it's got handy shortcuts for channels like Disney Plus and YouTube, and I think it looks slick. Like, toss all your remotes in a drawer and just keep this thing out. It does everything you need and looks cooler too. Oh, and pro tip for Sony TV owners, if you have a Sony TV from the last couple of years, you do not need to purchase this remote. The remote that came with your TV will totally operate your PS5 too. Still, this one looks pretty good, so anyway, let's talk about audio for a minute. There are two ways to go with audio and neither of them involve the speakers on your TV. Even if you own the awesome sounding Sony A90J OLED TV, I'm still gonna suggest you get a soundbar, a wireless speaker system, and or a set of headphones. Why? Because surround sound from the PS5 is incredible and you not only deserve to enjoy it, but you may find it gives you an advantage on some games. There's a lot of soundbar options out there and here's a video I recently put out on the best ones, but I would encourage you to consider getting a proper surround sound soundbar system and bonus if it does Dolby Atmos as well. Now, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg here. Vizio, for instance, offers this killer 
killer and affordable Dolby Atmos soundbar system that honestly sounds way better than you're gonna expect it to. It gives you deep immersion into your games and you can hear your enemies before you see them, giving you a leg up in competitive shooters. It makes games way more fun, makes movies more fun. It's just more of the fun that your PS5 is built to deliver. Now, as fun as a surround sound system may be, there are, of course, times when you can't make that much noise, but you still want great sound and you probably want to chat with your friends too. The SteelSeries Arctis 7P wireless headset is a fantastic option that works with multiple devices in your entertainment room and yes, definitely works with your PS5. SteelSeries is known for its great build quality and even greater performance, and this headset is no exception. The transceiver comes with optical in and out ports, which means not only can you connect it to your PS5, you can also connect it directly to your TV to have a private listening experience of whatever it is you're watching. It also means you can have both a soundbar and the headset ready to go at any time. The microphone on this headset retracts back into the headset when you're not using it. And probably my favorite feature of all is the fact that SteelSeries provides two separate batteries in the box. Remember removable batteries in our phones? No? I'm dating myself again. Anyway, the batteries are charged by the receiver, so no need for extra charging devices nearby. You pop one in to use while the other charges so it's ready to go when the one in your headset dies. And of course, the sound, which is kind of an important part, is also fantastic. These are a great option at a great price. Now, we didn't pick the Sony official PS5 headset because even though it's meant to work specifically for the PS5, we wanted to give you some options for other audio listening. If, however, you're looking to buy an extra controller, yeah, we gotta go with the official PS5 DualSense controller. We went with the Cosmic Red here, but there's also black, white, and several other colors you can choose from. There's really no substitute for an official DualSense controller. Sony just gets it right. For games like Spider-Man Miles Morales or the new Call of Duty Vanguard, the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers really augment the feeling of being each character. Whether it's simple feedback of interacting with an item or the variable feedback of squeezing the R2 button when you hit that trigger hard, it's one of the most unique experiences in gaming. And honestly, one of the reasons the PS5 has a leg up over the Xbox. If you haven't experienced it yet, you'll know what I mean soon. And if you have, well, you know I'm right. So now that you have two controllers, you want an easy way to charge them, right? I don't know about you, but I feel like having a USB-C cable dangling from the console all the time is not a good look. But don't worry, I got you. This Nexigo charging dock for PS5 controllers comes in a few colors, even the same cosmic red that we chose for our second controller. You can plug it into any USB port on a surge protector or even the back of your TV, but if you use the included power adapter, you'll get fast charging for two controllers at the same time. You'll get a full charge in a couple of hours, so just hang it up when you're not playing and you'll always come back to a controller that's ready for another marathon gaming sesh. I think it's pretty sleek too. It's got these accent lights that match the DualSense controller, so when it's blinking orange, it's charging, and when it's done, it just turns off. The system has a built-in intelligence chip, so it's smart about how it charges the battery to maximize lifespan, and it won't overload the battery either. It fits perfectly on your TV stand or media cabinet. It even comes with thumb grips to help you adjust the feel of the sticks on the controller, which again, I think is pretty slick. Okay, it's been all fun and games until now, but I wanna get to a serious upgrade. It's a must have, and it requires a little bit of work, but it is so worth it. It'll take like two minutes or so, and you'll transform your PS5. I am, of course, talking about boosting storage with a new internal solid state drive. Now, don't freak out, all right? This is totally sanctioned by Sony PlayStation, and what you're about to see me do, and ultimately do yourself, will not void your warranty. Now, unfortunately, you can't just use one of the USB 3.0 ports on the back of your PS5 and just plug in a hard drive to play PS5 games. Yes, you can do that with the PlayStation 4, but to benefit from the ultra-fast loading times that all PS5 games are meant to have, you need to grab a number one Phillips head screwdriver and do a little tinkering. Personally, I love this stuff. But before you get to unscrewing, you need to purchase a very specific hard drive. Sony has a support page that lists the minimum specs, but here's the important info. You need an M.2 SSD that is PCIe Gen 4. Its write speed needs to be at least 5,500 megabytes per second, and Sony even recommends that you go higher than that. It's also highly recommended to buy one already equipped with a heatsink, or you'll need to add a heatsink yourself. 
or just save yourself the trouble and keep watching because we did the legwork for you. We chose the Western Digital Black SN850 NVMe hard drive because it has the exact right specs, was recommended by Sony, and has up to 7,000 megabytes per second write speed. If you have trouble buying the one with the heatsink, no worries, we got the one without it and bought a heatsink ourselves to show you how it's done. This advancing gene heatsink fits not only our Western Digital Black SSD, but also is small enough to fit inside the PS5 itself, which is a critical component. If you search for a matching heatsink for your preferred drive, chances are it should fit the drive, but fitting it in the PS5 is more important. So again, consider buying what you see here because we just, we know it works. Before we open up the PS5, let's attach this heatsink. Now you've got two pieces to this heatsink. There's the silver part here and this black portion. And the kit comes with two pieces of double-sided thermal tape. What we're gonna do here is make a little SSD sandwich. Now take the protective plastic off one side of one of the pieces of double-sided thermal tape then lay it down into the cavity of this silver piece like so. Then go ahead and remove the protective plastic on what's left exposed so it's sticky and ready for our SSD. Now grab your SSD and place it on the sticky tape, but make sure to align it so that the connector end is exposed, as is this portion on the other side where we'll secure the SSD later. See, like this. Okay, take that other piece of thermal tape, pull off the plastic, lay down on the strip so it sticks, pull off this last piece of plastic, and here's the trick with this. Don't try to slide this black piece in. Instead, line it up like so, and just snap it in with a little bit of pressure. That's it, your SSD's heat will now be uh, synced. Okay, let's move on. Now you're gonna wanna have that number one Phillips screwdriver handy, and make sure you have a clean surface on which to place your unplugged PS5. You'll also wanna make sure ahead of time that your PS5 has the latest software update, and that you completely turn it off before unplugging it. Now, before we dig into this, Sony also recommends rubbing your fingers on metal to remove any static electricity. What's really going on is that you're grounding yourself. Be grounded, my friends. It's important for your PS5 safety. Now, place the PS5 upside down so that the PS5 logo is facing away from you and the power port is over here on the left. Now we just gotta pop this cover off. It's pretty easy. I just do it like this and then slide it off to the side. Now that that's off, you can see the silver cover for the hard drive right here next to the fan. So now it's time to grab that number one Phillips screwdriver. See that screw with the button logo? Nice touch, right? Unscrew it and then take that screw and put it off to the side really carefully because if it drops into the fan It's like game over now You can see the expansion bay with one screw on the end You'll want to remove that screw and the spacer and with our Western digital hard drive We're gonna need to take that spacer and put it in the space marked 80 now We can grab our hard drive and align it kind of diagonally with the notch here and gently but firmly push it in It should slot in pretty easily and now you can just kind of gently push the drive down and grab that screw that we took out earlier and secure it inside. Then we just put the silver cover back on, reattach the white PS5 cover, you'll hear a click, and we're in business. Now, when you power things back on, the PS5 should automatically start by asking you to format your new M.2 SSD, and now you should have plenty of storage space for the next generation of games. And that's it. I hope you had fun. I know we did. And get ready for a whole bunch more fun with your new PS5 setup. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Do you have a tricked out PS5 setup at home? Tell us about it down in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing and here's two other videos I think you'll like.